Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 27th National Convention of the Tax Institute. Just taking the lead from those short snippets, I think what we are here for is certainly to talk about tax. It will be on our lips for the whole two and a half days, maybe going over into Saturday as well, I'm sure. And we're passionate about it. It's very important to be passionate about tax, to get it right, or at least to move it in the right direction. And I think one thing we have learned in the last 10, 12 years is that we all know that cakes do suffer GST. There's no doubt about that. The, this convention is the Tax Institute's premier event. It's where we do celebrate the Tax Institute, we celebrate the uh, involvement with tax, all the educational aspects of our convention, but it's also about fun. Uh, those last few overheads, PowerPoints and photographs did show that we do have fun. So I join you to enjoy every aspect of the convention. We've got a very, very extensive, fulsome, spectacular program for you uh, this year. We've got a great number of extremely well known and acknowledged speakers in the tax sphere and outside the tax sphere as well, as you will see shortly. The Tax Institute's predominant um, objective is education. And in most respects, that's what this convention is about, to push the boundaries of education, to ensure that professionals in the tax arena are well versed in the very complicated tax laws that we, in some senses, have to suffer but at the same time also enjoy the mastery of. At the same time, we continue to build our reputation as an authoritative opinion leader and driving force in attempting to improve the tax system. It's something we take very, very, uh, we see as very, very important. And I'll get on shortly to talk about and introduce our um, policy group but it is something that we regard as an extremely important aspect, albeit not the dominant aspect of our being in existence. We have remained, however, at the forefront of tax law design and policy, as well as um, implementation and administration. It's very important to be there when the decisions are made, to be part of that process. And the Tax Institute represents tax professionals throughout Australia at all levels right through from the very big end of town through to the very the advisors of the micro businesses. And of course, we do have members from government and we respect their views and we want to take account of their views. We push in that area because we recognise the very significant problems that our members have. Our members do face great difficulties in really just being a part of the administration of the tax system, a very important part of the administration of the tax system. And our policy unit is there for the purposes of ensuring that we get the best, simplest, fairest system we possibly can. Of course, everybody understands and acknowledges that's not always an easy feat at all. And sometimes the tax office come out with surprising interpretations that have to be addressed. But it's part of our, our platform, our exercise. We also want to acknowledge those members who um, are at the forefront of technical discussions. Our technical subcommittee members, they are invaluable to the Tax Institute and invaluable to all our members because they keep us abreast, I mean Tax Institute, abreast of all the industry action to particular issues that arise, as well as providing the very important technical depth and understanding that is required to be called upon from time to time. A very recent demonstration of that has come about in the context of um, the multiflex legislation, which was introduced into Parliament so rapidly, I think it made, brought tears to my eyes. It was our GST subcommittee performed well beyond any expectations that they compiled our response on the weekend. There were five business days only uh, available to provide consul consultation, and they did it, and moreover, the government listened and took, Treasury listened and took account of many of the propositions put forward in that legislation and it was improved markedly. Uh, likewise in relation to the very recent and somewhat controversial proposal to amend Part 4A of the Income Tax Assessment Act 1936, again our corporate sub 